Let's have a look at what's grabbing headlines here in France. Lots of focus, in fact, uh, on that news we told you in the business news yesterday. That major contract France uh, winning to build 12 submarines for the Australian Navy, beating bids from Japan and Germany. Flows here to explain. Right, it's huge news in the French press today. Les Echos, the business uh, paper, calls it the contract of the century. Uh, and there is a lot of money involved mm, in this contract. Sure $50 billion, so 34 billion euros. Figures enough uh, to make you dizzy, according to to Le Parisien, uh, and it says, and Le Parisien, its editorial, is really excited about this deal. It says, look, good news is pretty rare these days, so let's celebrate this historic deal, you can see it there, which is going to create thousands of jobs. It's great for morale here uh, in, uh, in, in France, and it says it's actually thanks to France's excellent superiority in terms of technology that we managed to clinch this deal and beat the Japanese and the Germans. OK, answer me this then, Flo. What is so special about French submarines? <laughs> well, you can read more about it in Le Parisien, which has a clever little graphic explaining just what's so cool about the Barracuda attack submarine. You can see it here. Uh, Le Parisien calls it a technological jewel. It's 99 metres long, 8.8 uh, .8 metres in diameter. Uh, it's fast and quiet at the same time, so that sounds pretty cool. And it's very autonomous. Uh, it says it can essentially stock supplies between 70 and 90 days, uh, current submarines, uh, with competition essentially, uh, can only stock uh, supplies for about 60 days. So quite a quite a leg up there for the Barracuda submarine. And it's also more efficient in terms of radar, listening, et cetera. Uh, so it's really, it's, it's technologically, it is perhaps quite a jewel. But uh, some critics have actually voiced concern that France is actually perhaps sharing too much of its sensitive technology. You can read more about it here in Le Parisien as well, talking about how at the main arsenal in Cherbourg, a lot of people are waiting to see what's going to happen. Other papers, though, rather hailing this uh, as an opportunity for France, in fact, to uh, make rather a comeback in the Pacific. That's right. That's what La Croix, the Catholic paper, says. It points out that France was once a very powerful influence in the Pacific, but it kind of had a falling out mainly due to nuclear testing in the 80s and the 90s, uh, which severely damaged relations with countries in the region. And then, of course, uh, in 1985, French intelligence services sunk uh, Greenpeace's Rainbow Warrior uh, ship right off the uh, a port in New Zealand. And this really kind of uh, upset relations in the region as well because a photographer drowned in that incident. Now, since the 80s and the 90s, though, France has been carrying out a very patient charm offensive, according to La Croix, and it seems to be working. Uh, La Croix points out that these days, French is actually the first foreign language to be learned in Australia, and then you have this very lucrative deal. Mm -hmm. OK, well, many papers celebrating, but come on, Flo, let's be a bit <laughs> negative for once. Um, others aren't so thrilled, are they, about this military That's deal? right. There's always going to be a critic, right? Uh, let's take a look at Libération, the main left-wing paper uh, that is poking fun at this deal a little bit. It's, you can see they're talking about les gars de la marine. It's kind of a play on words. I mean, it's, it's saying essentially the Navy lads here. They are all, all, all gung-ho about this military deal. But don't forget, this is a left-wing government. Uh, and Libération says there's, a, there's something quite paradoxical about the fact that this mega-military contract was essentially obtained by the socialist government. And you can see it's editorial here. It's strange that this current socialist government is really good at selling weapons and uh, and submarines. Uh, and and uh, you can see they're talking about how it's cynical. And also in its editorial, it says, you know, if we really had a choice in the matter, we would rather France sell products uh, that are actually good for humanity instead of weapons. I prefer it when we're being positive. <laughs> so let's um, talk about the other big story in the papers. This is the unemployment figures here in France. The number of job seekers uh, actually went that way for That's once. Right. Down. For once, it's incredible. I had to rub my eyes. Uh, Le Figaro uh, says that it was a very pleasant surprise for March, so minus 1.7% drop in the number of job seekers. Uh, Les Ecoux uh, also says that these figures dropped significantly in March thanks to short-term contracts, according to Les Ecoux, so once again, the business paper. Le Parisien asks the million-dollar question, is how long is this drop in unemployment going to last? This is, well, you can see the submarine again there. But the, they're wondering, is this drop in unemployment, is it going to be for good? Is it really going to be a long-term thing? You can see it there. Now, the Huffington Post says, look, Let's just take this good news while we can. Uh, we have this submarine contract that's really good now. We have this drop in unemployment. Maybe Francois Hollande was right a few weeks ago. You might remember he said France is getting better. Now, at the time, nobody really believed him. But, you know, the events in recent days perhaps suggest that he, he might be right.
Must be a lecture in the head. <laughs> now, finally, um, the papers are focusing on the release of a documentary. Now, this is on the, the state of France after last year's Charlie Hebdo attacks. That's right. Uh, the, the film is called Habitants, so Inhabitants. It's a film by uh, Raymond Depardon. You might uh, be familiar with him. He's a famous French documentary maker. So <clears throat> in January 2015, following the Charlie Hebdo attacks, he decided to hit the road with a caravan and basically interview, well, film French people mm. having conversations. Essentially, he went throughout France and just picked two people uh, and got them to finish their conversation in front of the camera. Uh, and uh, uh, you can see uh, uh, Le Libération here talking about two by two, four uh, de pardon, uh, calls the film intimate and beautiful. Uh, essentially, it's a celebration of freedom of expression. What do these people talk about? You might mm. be curious. Well, yeah. you can read more about it in uh, L'Humanité. Uh, essentially, they're talking about love, sex, money, the future everyday things. And, and L'Humanité is really thrilled about this, uh, this film as well. They actually interview uh, Raymond Depardon today. Uh, and he says he wanted to go against the idea that, that France is a, is a sad country. And so he wanted to give us a peek into the beautiful and sometimes, you know, tragic conversations that we can have uh, every day. And you can see the title here. It says that uh, Depardon has lent an ear to the invisible people in France. And I must admit, I'm, I'm quite looking forward to seeing this film. Okay. Yeah, it looks nice. They could have done us. <laughs> exactly. Talk, talking about the newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Flo, thanks a lot. Flo Vilmer with the uh, papers here on France 24.